what's held her here. And over the years, I've heard a plethora of excuses on why people can't work on their emergency preparedness. Uh, the excuses range from budgeting concerns, which of course, all of these excuses are valid, to even not having enough storage space to uh, stow your gear as well as supplies. But the one main culprit that I continually hear over and over and over is time or lack of. So uh, what I began to do over the years is basically try to come up with ideas where we can fit our preparedness into our uh, packed schedules. And to do this, we need to relatively uh, multitask. And what I wanna share with you today is an article that I wrote on this topic of time management for preparedness. And I have this accompanying video just to bring the point across a little bit more. And what I wanna do in this video is share with you a few of my tips that seem to work across the board that'll uh, basically allot you the time that you need to effectively, effectively prepare for any emergency situation. So let's get started. Now, one of the tips that I do recommend is to go camping. We have time constraints a lot of times brought up by family, but we still need to spend family time, quality time, take holidays together, things of that nature. And this even includes your pets. If your extended family or maybe just your primary family is uh, pets. So we need to spend time with them. So why not couple these or multitask as I brought up earlier and go out in a camping situation. Try to keep it as basic as possible. Try not to get the electrical hookups. Try not to get the water hookups at your direct campsite and uh, try to be off grid as much as possible. So now you're able to spend that quality time that's already packed into your schedule with your family and at the same time you're outdoors working on your preparedness skills and as you know there's a plethora of them that you could explore in a camping environment. The next tip goes along the same lines as uh, uniting the family or your extended group of friends and getting together and watching video tutorials. Right? It might not seem super exciting, but if you go ahead and the whole thing is the camaraderie and everybody being together, whether it's your family, whether it's your preparedness groups, friends, whatever the case may be, usually there's some time for uh, TV and putting on the latest feature, so on and so forth. But remember, the most important thing is the activity and the family or the group being together. What you're watching should really be secondary. And once again, sticking with the packed schedule, we need to allot that family time, that quality bonding time. So instead of watching that movie for the fifth time that you and your family enjoy, why not put on some uh, interesting video tutorials? And uh, that way you can work on your preparedness skill, still have, have your bonding time, feed in that good knowledge. And on top of it, it's already part of your schedule. So it's not taking up any more time. So the next tip would be to go off grid in your home. Uh, once again, keeping with the time management frame. Now you're in your home, you don't have to leave, you don't have to go anywhere, you don't need to allot that extra time for travel and even preparation. So the best thing that you wanna do is mimic those emergency situations. If it's possible, shut off that electrical breaker for those 48 to 72 hours over the weekend and make it a family event. You're basically camping indoors. So you're pretty much in an ideal scenario, but it's gonna teach you a lot about your preparedness plan. Uh, is it addressed correctly? What can you improve on? How are the food needs? How are you boiling your water? Uh, just so many things that are gonna come up into play just as you are going and interacting with your everyday life that it's gonna set up those flags of, wow, I'm glad that I did prepare this way, or you know what, I really need to fix this and fix it quickly in order to be ready for that emergency. So uh, bringing them all together, staying indoors, getting that practice of bugging in, if that's what the emergency or crisis down the line entails, uh, you're prepared and you get that quality feedback and experience. Add one piece of gear per month. So what I mean for that is not only do you have to address your personal gear, but you also have to address your group gear or family gear, things that you're gonna need for the group, not just for your own personal go bag or personal kit. And uh, that could get overwhelming and it also takes time. So you could either rush it and end up with inferior products or products that you don't even need and serve a purpose just because you're trying to cram everything into a bag so that you're prepared. Uh, we want to avoid that. We want to make sure that not only are you getting quality items for the best price, but you also know how to utilize them and deploy them and you're familiar with them. 
And now if you stick with that rule of just adding one little piece of gear per month, it gives you time, takes the pressure off, all right? Once again, addresses your time and needs and make sure that you're doing your research and uh, getting familiar with these items so that when you do need them, they are gonna work for you. Go for a walk with your family. Once again, keeping in time with, or keeping uh, time management in mind and knowing that we need to spend time with our family. If you go ahead and say, okay, well, we're gonna spend this time on the couch or we were gonna spend this hour doing something else, get out there and go for a walk. If you have to and there's nothing really local or convenient, get in a car, find a local park, county park, state park, and go out there. But the caveat here would be to throw on a pack, throw on your go bag, have everybody in your, their, uh, in your family or in your group throw on their go bags or their little personal kits. And you're out there going for a walk, not only are you bonding and utilizing time that's already been scheduled, but you're getting great preparedness work and great physical preparedness work on top of it because you're hiking with a pack. And this is also going to give you some experience that if you do need to move out on foot or bug out on foot, you'll have that experience. You can kind of know what you're going to handle and what you can handle or who the weakest link in your family might be that you're going to need to maybe uh, support their gear also. So all of these questions that are working on your preparedness plan just because you took the time to go for a walk and once again, that time was already allotted uh, for family time, so it's not really uh, cramming more of your pack schedule. And this also works for your dogs. Uh, your, they need to go on a walk on a daily basis. Why not throw on your go bag, throw on your pack, work on your conditioning, work on your preparedness skills, uh, throw a pack on your dog if that's part of your plan, or realize if your dog even needs a pack. So these are all questions that you're gonna answer for yourself by going ahead and uh, utilizing this tip. Volunteer at a Boy Scout outing. I'm sure that you know somebody that's in scouting or has a son uh, that's in scouting and they're always looking for volunteers. And uh, the good thing about this is you don't have to commit fully. Uh, you can just go on an outing once in a while or even just once a year. And it's gonna help out the troop tremendously because they always need extra people to drive to get the scouts to the campsite, uh, other adult leaders that need to be there just for uh, supervision purposes. And once again, if you are familiar uh, with the parents of the scout and they can vouch for you, you'll be more than welcome to come and help out. And the wonderful thing about this is not only are you crossing up your volunteer time, but you're going to get uh, an amazing amount of knowledge because you're going to see these boys operate, and especially if it's a good troop, and you're going to see uh, how their skills are deployed how they operate as one unit, how they break off and operate as an effective patrol with a smaller unit. And the skill sets that they're working on are just continual, from fire building to cooking to shelter building, pioneering, you name it. That's just part of their routine to set up their base camp. And you could sit there taking advantage of all this, soaking all of this knowledge in, that uh, if you were out there on your own, you might not have the experience or the wherewithal to uh, be able to execute these things. So by being out there with these scouts, they already have all the equipment, they already have all the gear, and you could just sit there and uh, collect a bunch of knowledge that you could then implement into your own personal and or group plan. Attend the local CERT event. Now CERT is a community emergency response team. Uh, so basically most uh, locales, cities, counties, states have their own uh, CERT teams, which basically is getting the community involved. And their main job is uh, disaster preparedness or how to execute once there is a disaster in play. So it's part of FEMA and it's kind of uh, controlled by FEMA. So the good thing about this is thinking of your pack schedule, we still need to get out there and involved with our local communities. Uh, if in an emergency, these are the people that you're gonna have to work with. So it's pretty smart to uh, get to know them and uh, get them to know you because in an emergency, you're gonna need all the help that you possibly can get. So thinking of that pack schedule, now you're crossing off your community relations because you get to hang out with your neighbors, see your neighbors, so on and so forth, uh, so that you're not that person that's avoiding uh, everybody out there. And uh, we're not talking about often, once a year, check uh, your township or city's local website. Pretty sure that they end up having a CERT team. If not, there'll be one close enough that you can go ahead and work with and you're going to gain a plethora of skills that you might not have had time to devote because that's their job. So you're gonna sit there and every minute that you spend with them, you're gonna be exposed to their plan 
exposed to what their mission is, and exposed to building those skills that you need for your own personal plan. Practice fire building at home. Uh, one of the main skills that we will need in an emergency or a survival situation is fire building and getting that fire started as well as maintained. With our packed schedules, or those of you that have really packed schedules that don't have time to go out in the field or, uh, on a regular basis or camping on a regular basis, you need to still hone in and uh, develop these fire starting skills and a plethora of different means of starting these fires. So what I recommend is if it's possible, and some people are able to do it, you can put your own fire ring in your backyard and utilize that for practice. Uh, but for those of us that can't do that, depending on the cities and zoning laws and things of that nature, you can go ahead and get yourself a little fire pit. Uh, they're inexpensive, they're everywhere these days at the big box stores. Pick one of them up and utilize that to practice your fire building skills over and over and over. And once again, you're home, so you don't really need to go anywhere. So going with the time management uh, plan, if you're spending family time, if you need to cook lunch, cook dinner, why not go outside, utilize your fire pit, use your ferro rod or whatever fire starter you want to practice with, get that fire started, and end up making lunch for the family. Uh, once again, that was time that you were going to devote anyway to being indoors and utilizing your stove. Uh, other times is keeping in uh, the theme for uh, spending quality family time, going out there, starting that fire is the excuse to get your practice in, and now bring the family outside and have to toast some marshmallows, sit around the fire. Now you're getting your quality time, you're getting away from the, the TV box that's sitting there pretty much, you know, feeding us useless information anyway. So you're much better off enjoying it, uh, uh, nature, uh, even if it's just outdoors in your backyard, spending that quality time with your family and honing in those fire building skills. So the bottom line here is we could always find excuses of uh, why we don't have time. What we want to do is, is search for answers. We realize that preparedness is important. Uh, that's why you're even listening to this or, or trying to gather information for yourself and for your family. So we know that we really can't bypass this. This is something that's important. So you need to also make that extra effort to say, okay, yeah, I understand. This might not be super simple, but at the same time, it's doable. And if it's doable, you're going to get that knowledge. You're going to get that experience as opposed to having none. So it's, uh, it's really up to you. It's up to your desire, but understand that this is a responsibility. I've given a few of my tips uh, to share with you. There are countless other ones out there. Use these tips as a guide. Uh, some of them might work flawlessly for, for you. Some of them won't be uh, uh, applicable at all uh, because of your current situation and location or whatever the case may be. But that's what we do here with our community is just share information. And hopefully something that I wrote about in the article, so make sure you do read the article, or that I covered in this video, sparked something inside of you, gave you an idea that you can go and run with it to aid in your preparedness that much better. Once again, this is Helder. I hope you found this information useful.